Next amount is PQ's newest release on the Nintendo Switch. This monster taming RPG is the very first game into the series that originally released on mobile devices back in 2017. And now, many years later, and even after the sequel, Next Amount Extension launching on Switch late last year, is now finally also making its way into consoles, not just the Nintendo Switch, but PlayStation 4 as well. One of the biggest things that always stood out to me the very first time I played Next Amount Extension late last year in August was that the humor that the game actually provided was just almost second to none. It was always extremely self-aware of any situation, and it knew when to actually pick its moments. So coming on to Nexamon, the very first release, it shouldn't necessarily come to too much of a surprise that it's chock full of referential materials, witty and clever writing, and of course, tons of self-awareness. Because as a prequel to Extinction, you actually have a little bit of a concept as to what the story should actually be about. A group of heroes having to go up face to face with Omnicrom, essentially the god of all Nexamons, and you being one lonely trainer who pretty much has to figure out their way into the world and try to figure out what their role is related into any of this. So in that regard, the story isn't necessarily so much of a standout as the actual writing ends up being. And of course, at the heart of everything are the Nexamon creatures themselves. They come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, and of course, different elements. Elements, of course, play off of one another, but also exist to be able to counter each other perfectly. The seven elemental classes do enough to provide a little bit of a difference for each one of the Nexomons you'll end up finding all over the world, and there are about 300 creatures in total available in this game. They're all divided into rarities, so you find plenty of common ones and, of course, super rare ones as well. One of my very early criticisms for Nexomon Extinction is something that is still available in this game, and that's the way that the rarity system actually works when it comes to catching Nexomons themselves. It pretty much turns out that you're going to be tossing a ton of Nexomon traps to be able to catch some of these guys, because essentially you have to do a status effect and then lower their health as you typically would, and then it becomes kind of like a gotcha game. It's pretty much randomly based. A lot of times you should be able to catch a Nexomon, but just it doesn't necessarily want to be catched. So it's pretty much just luck base and it's one of those things that I always wanted them to go ahead and fix in Nexomon extension but in this game because again it came before extension it's one of those things that it was just built in by nature. With that said if you do manage to catch one of these critters one of the things that you always notice is that they can always become better than they were before so you want to level them up evolve them if that's a possibility and of course get them to learn brand new and stronger abilities. Because one of the biggest differentiators from Nexomon to other monster taming games of this genre is the fact that instead of moves being limited by uses, you actually have a number of stamina. You earn a little bit of stamina each and every one turn, but each one of the moves that your Nexomon uses spends a little bit of stamina. So if you end up running out of stamina, your Nexomon cannot do any attack. It doesn't necessarily matter what move you're trying to do. So you definitely have to keep in mind that you cannot necessarily spam the same move over and over because higher damage moves are going to cost a little bit more stamina. This greatly affects how many Nexomon you want to be able to have available to you ready for battle. So you don't necessarily always want to carry a Nexomon that's just essentially there for grabbing experience. It's one of those things that you definitely want to have an evenly leveled group to be able to continue forward. This also plays into the difficulty of the game. A lot of people in Nexomon Extension actually were having a little bit of a tougher time when that game originally launched, and some of the difficulty was end up being essentially balanced and lowered and made a little bit easier through a patch. This game specifically, I do feel like is very much reversing track, and this pretty much feels like as difficult as it was on launch when you started playing Nexomon Extension. So in that regard, this game is not necessarily much of a pushover, and you will have to be able to think your way through some difficult battles because the game is just not necessarily willing to bend to your will. With all that said, moves have the typical status effects if you want to focus on that, huge damage or just straight up boosters and healers, so buffs and debuffs. So it's one of those things that you can definitely deck out your Nexomon and focus on a rounded out team that can definitely stand up to the tougher challenges the game will throw at you. And speaking about the Nexomon designs themselves, this is actually one of those things that I didn't necessarily have like the biggest attachment to it, only because I do think the ones in Nexomon Extension are a little bit better designed. You do have to keep in mind that the roster pretty much is completely different than it was on Nexomon Extension. So a lot of the Nexomon in this game are just Nexomons you've never seen before moves, typings, and stuff like that that are completely different. So it's one of those things that like, if you played Extinction first, like I did, it's one of those that is gonna take you a little bit of like a learning curve to be able to just find the ones that are appropriately good for you. 
With all that said, I would like to thank PQ for providing me with a review code, and I did spend most of my time playing on the Nintendo Switch Lite, so that's why I'm actually using trailers to showcase gameplay, and I thank them for providing those as well. Next amount on the Nintendo Switch makes a pretty glorious transition from the mobile offerings that it once had into the console experience. It doesn't necessarily have any sort of performance issues, and it doesn't necessarily feel bogged down or held back by having a mobile beginnings. But the level of familiarity will certainly be there if you recently played next amount extension, so that definitely might be a little bit of a drawback, where things might just end up feeling a bit too familiar like you've experienced them once before. Nintendo Sphere next amount on the Nintendo Switch, a 7 out of 10. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up, and as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya!